Tubers. Remember this guy? Yeah, I have some videos on him performing. And he was in that accident, which I have a video on, where he was in a toy hauler and we crashed. Anyway, I had it at a car frame shop. This one here would have been over my head because the body was twisted like one corner high, one corner low, and an extreme fold right in this area here. The front end was way up on them tubes. The rails underneath were really bent. Uh, yeah, and of course, there's the roll bar. That's kind of a self-explanatory thing right there. And then uh, some pieces the frame guy cut out for me so he could continue. And of course, the rear air shocks. Uh, I knew one of them was not good. And that kind of makes it self-explanatory somewhat. And if you pull on this guy, that makes it real self-explanatory. So, yeah. Okay, what else would you be interested in seeing here other than these were the rear fenders? Not much left to them. Windshield, that's gone. And side wings, that's what's left of them. Yeah, the front fender here was way up in the air. If you've seen the video of this, uh, after it was crashed, or maybe some of the pictures that I posted. What I did, I got the porta power out. And you can see the long stem on them. What I did, I stuck the floor jack under right here. And then where I have the beam, up here. Quite convenient. So I went between the beam and right here, applied pressure, and it got this down. But it's still bent way out right here, so I'm gonna have to press one and continue a little more on that deal. Now we see these pieces pieced in here. The frame guy did that for me because uh, he didn't want this to get rebent in this area. This was really folded up right in this area where everything was down and up and whatever. So I gotta cut this back farther and refit pieces in here. The engine oil cooler, that went up on a roll bar. It was an AC condenser. And uh, I was using it for an engine oil cooler. And as you can see, he don't look very happy. So I don't know what I'm gonna do with that yet. And I was wondering how he was gonna anchor this to the frame rack. I got pictures I'll post for you folks at the end. But yeah, he had to cut some holes in the floor here to get this anchored and to start pushing every which way. And uh, I didn't know how far that front end was bent way up on the front. And I was wondering, the steering wheel was laying in my lap when I, I did have it drivable when uh, I took it over there. And uh, yeah, he called me to ask me on that. How did you get them front rails bent so perfect? And anyway, uh, I, I told him the chassis is supposed to lay flat on a flat floor totally. Oh, really? So yeah, good thing I went over to talk to him and look at it. Now, over here, when, when I got it back, the thing was still leaning to one side really bad, but you, you eyeball everything and it looked pretty square. And I thought, I wonder if it's that rear sway bar. And uh, I made this, this was out of a full-size Buick or something. But anyway, uh, I know it's got some stress cracks in it and look at how it sits on the floor. This is actually holding one side lower and one side higher. Now, another thing I was working on after I got the sway bar off, I was checking these rear shocks, because you know, I got the double shocks, so it holds it up good enough. And uh, you can see this right here is Kitty Wampus. See how crooked that is? It's not in a perch real good as that side is. Well, this is a side that sustained the, the air shock damage which went in here. Yeah, this thing was bent up so bad that the shifter worked real hard even. And as you can see, it clicks now, works real sweet like it should. Oh, Chris, we still got some camper glass stuck here. Uh, for those of you who've never seen this, the whole dash, you unplug several plugs, take a speedometer cable off, it's in your hand. Uh, these are fuel tank vents right here that I soldered in. We got the main and the res reserves so that you never run out of fuel. I got the dual masters here for front and rear braking where I have the four pedals underneath. Uh, put the coolant fill cap way up high so it's easy to burp the system. Just crack something open in the back. Fills easily then. Coolant recovery bottle. And there's all my throttle stuff. God, I built this thing back in 1990-ish. Eh, look at some of the work. It, yeah, I do a little better nowadays, but either way, it went down the road until it comes out of the trailer. <laughs> so, I'll give you a little show of what's going on for your newbies that never seen this thing before. 
And, oh, the rack was bent up in here from the impact. And anyway, I had to, I actually managed to straighten the rack, which was made me very happy. It works real sweet again for the steering. So, oh, you nears, oh, it's gonna break. No, it's softer material, it ain't that hard. So, yeah, people always worry about you, I guess. I always like the lithium batteries. I'm getting sick of putting a charger on them. Lead acid things. And these were kind of neat. They had the push of a button and you could see the voltage of them. And unfortunately, they don't even do that anymore. I suppose keep the cost down and so they're more competitive. Well, here's some more stuff I've been up to. Uh, Clips subwoofer. Uh, lowest fuses, I guess. I didn't get a chance to look at him yet. Anyway, free is good. I like free stuff. And then uh, these are some frequency drive uh, printing press controllers here. And I had this one apart uh, to get at, there's two big capacitors for motor run and over current. I was hoping they had a code E5 or something like that. Anyway, I was hoping to test them and then we're bad. We gotta take everything out of the unit and then we're good. But anyway, if, I'm gonna shoot a part scanning at it. There's one part I think might be bad, but I can't really uh, test it properly. So he's gonna see if he can find one. If he can, I'll take it, pop it back apart again. We're gonna throw that in. And then he got another one. This one was from eBay, $800. But he said one of them new printing presses, he's running this older stuff and a new printing press he said is $250,000. So. I'll see if I can help him out on these. He wanted one for a spare, basically. He had to buy one. Ouch! Anyway, yeah. That's some of the other things I've been playing with behind the scenes. Well, I think it's time to go in. I had enough for today. And then uh, Squeaky here, she knows what time it is. She keeps licking her nose. Well, if I could right now, if you point to your wrist, here, I'll see if I can. I point to my wrist. That means it's time to go eat. <laughs> all right, I had another shock upstairs when I rebuilt all the other ones. They're 1200 bucks a piece. You could buy the kits for 40. So I rebuilt one extra one. That's what's on here now. The eyelet got destroyed on the top of these. So on this one anyway too. So I had to replace these guys. So anyway, what I ended up doing is putting a big long bar in here, stick it out uh, past the other side there and arm strong that. And as you can see, Mr. Islet there, this is pretty good on that fork on a shock now. And this is my rear sway bar that was really bent. I still got to do some touching with the welder and V-notching in a few areas. But anyway, this is all homemade, of course, too. The first one I made was a thinner material and it, it kept busting. So this was out of like a a smaller full-size car and then uh, this is your torque rod here for the brake to, for the rotation of that like they do on the motorcycles where it stops the rotation it floats with the rear wheel that all mounts on here now actually I replaced the chain on here not too long ago these are that 630 o-ring chain the bike originally came with a 530 but I was worried if I might snap it where we got the two dual rear tires and they got them energy absorbing hubs always on the motorcycle but here is a life's mystery right here the chain was now one link too short I looked the frame guy looked couldn't get the chain on and of course yeah so I ended up adding one here. These don't have the clip ring on them. I've never seen this before. And uh, anyway, you press it together, you get your O-rings in. And then what I did was center punch the crap out of it with that guy. And uh, anyway, hope it holds out. I got a little chain splitter thing here. That's what that tool is. Well, here's what I got for adjustment. And as you can see, it's all the way forward and you can Loosen these guys up, slide them back more now because it's probably going to be a little bit longer, need a little bit of adjustment. These pillow blocks here, they call them self aligning pillow blocks. And what the deal is with that is each arm can actually go separately and then they will swivel 
inside this housing here. All right, we're making some progress. We got the chain on now. And I got my supervisor here. And what I did, I pulled out them other spring shocks. So then I can let the air out of these and then I can get the full travel to check for the perfect uh, chain adjustment because it varies just a tad depending on where you're at. Now what I got my friend watching the light here so nobody takes it. Uh, this master link here, it's got the clip and you always put the opening toward the rear and rotation of course would be yay way. Uh, that way if a stick or some crap would ever get up in there, then uh, it'd be less apt to lodge that off. Another thing I want to tell you folks is on an O-ring chain, don't ever use regular chain lubricant because it'll take out the O-rings. There's a special lubricant for these where they got the O-rings in between. Let me get that light. Uh, hey, I got a neat little story for you folks. Years ago when I had my apartment, uh, when I first got there, it was $90 a month, heat and light included, if it gives you an idea how small it was. Four and a half years later when I left, it was 110 a month. But anyway, where I'm going with this, I had a friend that had a CB750 Honda, air-cooled motor, uh, oh geez, 74-ish. Anyway, he wanted a big camshaft put in it, so I'm like, well, I can do that out in the driveway. So I did, I took the motor apart, put the camshaft in, and I went for a ride. Oh my God, you hit the power band and it's like, hang on, what a difference it made. But after about the third time I got on it, it spit the chain. And what happens when it breaks the chain, it all wads up in here and takes out the motor case. So, to say the least, I had never had one of them apart before and had, they got the tranny and the clutch and everything all inside that motor case. So I actually had to switch out the one case because I sure the heck ain't gonna gobble it for him. And I broke it, so I got the luxury of fixing it. Yeah. Turned out pretty good. So, but what they had you could buy aftermarket at that time was a chain shoot, it's called. And if the chain spits, what it does, it's a C-shaped thing, like so. And if the chain spits, it'll just shoot it out to the rear and it, you don't damage your motor cases. And unfortunately, as far as I know, they don't have them for these here. And that little, uh, chunk of holes you see on the left hand side here that's my drive for the speedometer and actually with the gearbox I attached to it that sucker's spot on so well anyway hey tours I think I'm gonna wrap this one up here uh, I just want to get something together so you so you know what I'm doing over here what's keeping me out of trouble and if you can could you please uh, share like the video or whatever uh, it, I'd really appreciate it if I could get some more views I know it'd give me more ambition to get some more up, but I do appreciate my regular viewers. They are so kind to me on all the comments and everything. So, I hope to catch you back here again, and thank you for watching. There's that dog, windshield wiper. Windshield, come on. Windshield wiper, 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 wiper. <laughs> Taught her a new trick. <laughs>